it's my turn to work on the August challenge. And as you might remember, it's all about houses and buildings. So I went ahead and cut some simple cardboard to size. I add three pieces here, each one a bit smaller than the next. And that gives me a little slant. So when I add this roof piece, uh, I achieve a bit of dimension. So here's house number one. The next one has a completely different shape. And here I give it four layers. So all my houses are not exactly the same. And here I will attach the roof just by adding a strip of cardboard, which I folded right at the highest point. And that gives me the illusion of a roof. Next, I do a really long skinny building. It's more like a tower, I think. Here also I add four layers and a little piece from this styrofoam ball. So I have a different shape for a roof. Next, I cut out some shapes I can use for doors and windows, and I tried different combinations. First, I thought about two windows on this house, but then I opted for one window with shutters. Now, as part of this challenge, I received lots and lots of entries. And of course, you're going to see all of them in a lineup right after I'm done with this piece. And then towards the end of the video, there will be the September challenge. So don't go away. Here you can see that I cut out some small half circles and some longer skinny half circles so I could put them together and create these roof windows. I like the bit of dimension they have. Next, I will make a very simple chimney, which will go on the other house. And I think from here on, my process will be easy for you to follow. Like always, I put everything I use in the captions. If I have to explain something, I will speak up. Otherwise, I talk to you towards the end. Please enjoy.
I know I know a lot of painting and that's the reason I sped it up a bit. I think it was all pretty easy to follow. So remember this guy? He appeared in my last week's video. It's an assemblage piece I put together and if you haven't seen it, please do check it out. Anyway, I thought I could turn him into a silhouette and that way fulfill my person part of this challenge. Now, the way I will attach him to my background will definitely remind you about something very, very famous. You'll see. Finally, just about done. All I need to do to fulfill all the four core elements is to add a name to my little street. So I just use some black and white paper, my pen, and this is the name I picked. I think it fits quite nicely. I like the sound of it. And so I put it together just with my tacky glue. And then it also gets a little bit of the gold robin buff. And then I need to find a place to display it. Now my background is pretty packed, so I thought I'd just use a large pin, it's really long, and just attach it to the side of the house. That way it's also movable and I can turn it out where you can read it really well. And then I can also turn it down and it disappears between the houses. So my piece is done. I really enjoyed doing some of the painting. I think it's cool to have my little guy up there flying through the sky. I like all the texture and the bit of dimension I have in these houses and the bit of a grungy look. Now last month my email filled up with so many wonderful entries from all of you. I received amazing images, you had great ideas of how to fulfill this challenge and of course I put them all together. All your photos are here in the lineup. So please take a close look and enjoy.
So that was the lineup of all the wonderful entries I received during the month of August. I of course hope that you looked at each one of them, that you checked out the video link and that you enjoyed it as much as I did. A big thank you to all of you who participated and I hope you will join in again this month. Now if you are new to the four core challenge, please go below in my description box. There you will find a link to my intro video and that will get you up to date with all the information you may need. And now on to our September challenge. Now in these challenges of course I want to put out something that will help all of us to think outside the box, uh, pushes us a bit out of our comfort zone. On the other hand I don't want to make it too complicated either or too difficult. So I think one way to achieve that is to give a lot of leeway for interpretation, to give a lot of possible uh, items you can use, anything you have on hand. So without further ado, here is our September uh, challenge. Ta-da! We will be working on something free hanging. Free hanging could be anything on this list and more. It could be a mobile, it could be a pendulum, a dream catcher, a sun catcher, a garland, a bunting banner, it could be a flag, or probably there are more things that could fall under this category. Free hanging of course means that you can admire it from all angles. There's really no back or front. So a picture frame hanging on the wall would not fall under this category. And you can of course take this in a very delicate manner with something sways in the wind or you can take it in a very rustic way like a pendulum or anything that is suspended could be just about anything. It could be made out of very uh, light materials from feathers to using wood or metal. Anything goes. So let me show you just a few elements you may be able to use just to kind of get your um, imagination flowing and get you some uh, starting points of something you might have in your stash. So you could go with very natural things like branches or maybe you have uh, feathers. Now with feathers of course you could also combine flowers either real ones or artificial ones, maybe leaves. A uh, nice thing that flows easily and is very light are also ribbons or lace. Of course there's always fabric if you go for banting banners. Um, you could also go the paper route. Maybe you know how to do origami or maybe you have some decorated tags you like to display in a fun way. Or uh, maybe ATCs. Or maybe you have playing cards which you really like and are part of a collection. Some collections are really fun to display in a free hanging uh, manner. So maybe you have something. Or die cuts. It could be wooden die cuts. It could be paper or cardboard die cuts. You can make them from scratch. You can use what you already have and alter it. It's completely up to you. Balls are always a great thing to decorate either just one at a time or some suspended underneath each other, a few of them together in a cluster, different sizes, completely up to you. The same is with rings, wooden rings, and metal rings, you name it. Uh, this is another, just an interesting piece of paper if you want to go the paper route. But then of course there is also uh, the idea of using recycled materials. Maybe you have old CDs, uh, cardboard pieces, uh, bottle tops, corks. I have some imitation uh, light bulbs here. I have clothes pins, these kind of things. Uh, maybe uh, the natural route is also seashells or pretty stones, whatever you uh, may have. Let's see what else I have here. Or you can also make something from scratch. Maybe you like to work with polymer clay and you can create some elements that look great uh, suspended. And of course you can hang them either from string, any type you have, or if you need something more heavy duty, you can use chain or rope or whatever you may need to use to complete your project. So this is all part one. And now to part two and that is to make it colorful. 
it would be nice to include at least three bright colors. So you can use paints of course if some of your things have to be altered. Uh, but you don't have to. If some of your items, let's say uh, light bulbs are already green, that already gives you a bright color. So it all depends what you're working with. But just make sure you have at least uh, three bright colors in your project. You can use of course more. Now you're welcome to use black and white or gray or brown of course, but we won't count those as colors in this particular project. And that brings me to point number three and that would be to include beads or something bead like. Now bead like means something that has a hole in the middle that can be strung up. Now beads come in all kinds of great sizes and colors so there are a lot of possibility and something like this will probably fit to many many different projects. But maybe you want to go a completely different route. There are buttons that have holes, there are gears that have holes and maybe you work like to work with metal or wood and you want something a bit more rustic well there are metal nuts or wing nuts or whatever else you may be able to find in the handyman compartment of course little keys will work little springs can work or you can make your own long beads from a straw you just cut some pieces off and they are nice to keep things apart for little spaces. So you have all kinds of options. You can paint these things, you can leave them in their uh, color, whatever they come in. That's completely up to you. So that's part three. And now to part four. I was really thinking what else could I add? But there are so many possibilities already given over here and over here that I thought something that could wrap it all up would be when we take our photo, we will take it outdoors. We will take our hanging, free hanging creation and hang it on a tree or maybe underneath the balcony or the porch or wherever it could suspend nicely and take a photo and all those photos in the lineup I think will give it a real special interest if you have an outdoor view at the same time. So that's number four. So that's a little different than I usually do it but I think within these four core elements there is a lot of freedom and a lot of possibilities. And in review something free hanging, use whatever you have handy, whatever you like to work with, any material from light to heavy, from delicate to rustic will be fine. Make it colorful, include at least three bright colors and add beads or something bead-like to your structure. And fourth, which I have nothing to show you, take your photo outdoors so you give us a nice view. So that's all I had on the September challenge. I of course hope you will all play along again and like always I need to receive your photos during the month of September in my email. Then I will take all those photos together as a lineup and add them to my next four core video which will be up in on the first Friday in October. Wow October! The year is running away. And that reminds me I have not figured out yet what I will do during the October challenge but I know that in November I would like to do another assemblage one. Now we did one a few months ago where we made an assemblage piece on a flat surface in a frame but this time I would like to alter an item. The item could be anything from a musical instrument uh, to a lantern to a lamp to a vase whatever you have. Uh, but I thought I'd give you a little forewarning because assemblages need a bunch of junk and especially if you want to decorate an item you might want to keep your eyes open for something that may be suitable to work on. Alright, but that's not until November. So for September I think I gave you all you need to know. I can't wait to see what you come up with and just to answer a question I get many times. I don't know what I will be making yet 
either. I usually get these ideas and then when the time comes, uh, I hope I come up with something interesting. So we are all in the same boat. It is a little bit different to the things I usually make, uh, but I think it will be a fun challenge and I'm sure you will enjoy it too. All right, I think that's really all I had for today. If you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. I will see you latest next Friday here on my channel. So please have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay creative and bye bye for now.